Hello everyone, today I want to take another look at Bullet Train, the open source Ruby on Rails software as a service framework. We covered this in the previous video where we did a quick little basic setup. I say quick, it was like a 20 minute tutorial. I'll have a link to that in like the pinned comment or the video description or something. Uh, but today we're going to be taking a look specifically at how to do the Google OAuth as an example of how to add like an additional OAuth provider, which will let you have uh, something similar to uh, like those Google or the, the login with Google buttons, right? So to do this, we're going to have to clone a repo again. We'll then have to create some credentials and then we'll go ahead and we'll run three commands to add this or maybe four commands to add this to our application. Uh, and then we'll pretty much be done. So let's uh, go ahead and let's get started here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to clone this. I'm going to go over to code, click the copy button for SSH right here from the bullet train repo. I'm going to go ahead and do a git clone for this. And I'll clone this into video two because I still have a video from last episode. So we'll go ahead and we'll clone this and we'll CD into the video two. Now we do have to do our setup again. I'm just doing all this so that we can at least uh, see this, you know, from scratch or whatever. This will take a minute to run. Uh, but while we're doing this, I want to move this over to the side here and leave this over here so that we can have both of these. First of all, uh, we're going to proceed without homebrew and then we'll proceed with the outdated node in my case. We're not going to use GitHub for this, so I'm going to type no and then we'll go ahead and we'll run this. Now while this is running, we can come over to this thing here and we can set up our credentials. So this is in console.cloud.google.com. You go here to do your API keys and stuff. First thing you have to do is you have to enable the OAuth consent screen. If you don't already have a project, you click up here some, somehow to like create a project or something. You create the project, then you come over to OAuth consent screen. You set up a consent screen with pretty much the default settings. Uh, the only thing I did was I added my own user account as the test user, so my email right here. But the rest of it is pretty standard stuff that just comes out of the box. Uh, once we have this set up, we can then go over to our credentials. We can create a new credential. Uh, I think we click create credentials. We want to create a OAuth client ID, I believe. The application type is gonna be web app in this case. We can name this whatever we would like. I'm gonna go ahead and call this like bullet train video. Uh, and then we can come over here. We'll also name this one bullet train video. And that should be good. So that's our bin config. Let's just go ahead and let's run the second command here just so that we can have this running in the background. Uh, and then while we're doing that, we can come back over here. So for our authorized JavaScript origins, uh, that we can leave this for now. For our redirect URIs, we want this to be something like HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 3000. It does tell you to include the port if you uh, have something like this. And then we'll go ahead, we'll click create. At any point in the future, we can also come in here and configure this if we want to. So this gives us our client ID and our client secret. And in this application's case, it's a little weird, but basically there's gonna be, if we come over here to our source code, there's going to be something like right here, it's the application.yaml.example. So we're gonna have an application.yaml and in here we're going to set uh, our uh, keys for the uh, Google client. So we're gonna have like a Google client ID and a Google client secret, right? Okay, so this is now set up. Let's go ahead and let's just do a code dot real quick to add these secrets into the, uh, the code dot here. So let me move this down here. I'll move this browser back over and then we can move this VS code over here. So what we need to do is come into our config. We're gonna have a application.yaml in here. Uh, so this is for application.yaml. Now there is one other thing you can run here, which is if we come back to our bullet train readme real quick, uh, there is maybe not in here. It should be something like a bin slash secret, which will tell us to run. Uh, but for our Google Cloud, what we want to do is I have the names copied and pasted right here. We need a Google client uh, ID, which is going to be set to whatever the client ID that they gave us is. Go ahead and copy this and paste it in here. So that's our Google client ID. And now we need to copy our Google client secret, something like this. And we want to paste in this client secret. Like, okay, make sure you put in your own stuff because I'm gonna delete this after we're done with this video. Uh, but that gives us now our two keys. Now, generally this is okay, I guess, because it's how they want it to work. This is gonna be in your git ignore, I would imagine. Uh, if we come down here to wherever the git ignore is, uh, we can hopefully find this configure slash uh, whatever application.yaml or whatever. 
it's fine to have this in your Git ignore. I'm not really a fan of this. I would rather have a solution where you do something like use the Rails uh, or let's say editor equals code dot dash dash oops dash dash wait uh, and then Rails uh, credentials colon edit. But I couldn't find an example where they used this config file. Uh, but this would allow you to use your credentials and store your stuff encrypted as opposed to just leaving it out in the open like this. Because again, if, if you know you ever run into that situation, to me, it makes more sense to do it that way, but it's whatever. You just put in the EMV file. If someone gets access to your server, you're going to have bigger problems anyways than them accessing this, this secret, right? But okay, that takes care of that. Now, how do we actually do this OAuth stuff? Well, to get started, let's do a bin slash dev real quick and come over to localhost port 3000 real fast. Uh, and while that's running, I'm gonna move this over a bit more. Uh, we can also come over to, uh, if we go here, at some point this should take us to the website if Brave decides to work. We're gonna do, uh, don't have an account. You can see right now we only have the single sign in button, but if we click don't have an account, we can then do something like this uh, with my email, I guess. And then we can click sign up. And then we can do Dean and my last name and Dean in as, oops, as the example here. And we can click next. So that should log us in just fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll out a bit so I can come over here and click log out. And now we'll add in this additional button. So to do this, we need to do a couple things. If we come over to the bullet train website, go to documentation and come down to the, uh, it's gonna be authentication, I guess, is probably where this is. Uh, nope, but this does tell us the other command. If you wanna set up two-factor, you can run bin slash secrets. It'll take a minute, uh, but this can run from your, your console here. Uh, if we come down to OAuth providers and integration, that's what we're looking for. If we run this command right here for the super scaffold generator for the OAuth provider, which was one of the five options we saw in the previous video, this will give us some instructions for how to use this. So it'll tell us the usage has been slash super scaffold. You then have to provide or pass in the OAuth provider with the gem, the, the provider name of the gem, our provider, the API key and the client and the, the secret. So these are the client and secret we got from Google right here. And then we have to set up these others as well. So they give you an example for doing with Stripe. They give you another one with Shopify. And I'm gonna give you a third one with Google. Now this is gonna be a little bit weird, but bear with me. First thing we have to do is we're gonna have to add the gem that this is being used with, which uh, I think there should be a list somewhere right here, the list of strategies if we open this. Uh, this is github.com slash omniauths wiki list of strategies. If we come in here, we can actually search for Google. And you can see in here, they have the Google OAuth 2, which is a gem that you can use. So if we middle mouse click that, we can come over to the page for this. And you can see in here, we have this gem that we have to add, which is the OmniAuth Google OAuth 2. So we can go ahead and we can add that if we come over here. Uh, I don't know if we have to add this, but it's just uh, how I did this. So we'll just go ahead and we'll say uh, gem uh, OmniAuth Google OAuth 2. Go ahead and run a bundle command real quick. That will install it. And then at this point, we already have OmniAuth in our application or we have OAuth in our application. So now we're good to go there. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Let's generate a model for this. So to do this, we need to do a model for OAuth, Rails G model OAuth colon colon Google account. We then need to pass in a UID of uh, type string, a data of type JSON B and a user colon references, just like that. And that will generate our model for us. Now, in this case, uh, if I can run the super scaffold generator, maybe, I think it actually tells us how to do this. So I'm gonna try this real quick. I'm gonna do something that's hopefully not gonna work, um, but hopefully this will uh, tell us what to run first. So I'm gonna run this OAuth provider and pass in OmniAuth Google OAuth 2. Doesn't look like that worked, so I'm gonna paste in a bit more because uh, I already know what the rest of this command is. But if we pass in the entire thing, should hopefully at some point tell us that we should use these commands. So this is where I actually got the commands from. I tried to construct the bin slash super scaffold in the way that it expected. And it told me that I should run the generation for the Google account, one to generate the integrations right here, and one to generate the web hooks. So I'm assuming if you were to do something similar with let's say Twitter or X or whatever they decide to name it next week, uh, you would get something similar where it tells you roughly what to put in. Now in this case, it did tell me to run 
uh, this with uh, Google instead of like Google OAuth 2, I think. Uh, but I think these commands should be fine. So if you copy and paste these in, you'll be good. So what we'll do is we'll copy the next command in because we already did the model for our uh, Google account. Now we'll do one for integrations, Google installation, takes in a team of type references. Remember everything's a team in here. We have the OAuth Google account of type references and then we have a name of type string. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this one. And again, remember in between these models, you never want to run your super scaffolds. You always want to run those after you're done generating all of your models. So let's go ahead and let's paste in our last model here. This is for the web hooks, because again, they're going to be passing some data back. And anytime you get something like that, where like the account might, uh, or if the service might, for some reason, need to communicate with your server directly, that's going to be done through web hooks. In this case, uh, this is handled by bullet train, but we do have to set up a web hooks and incoming web hooks and OAuth web hook, and then the Google account web hook. This will take some data, which is uh, JSON B processed at daytime, a verified at daytime and a uh, Google OAuth account references. We're just copying all of these straight from the super scaffold command that it gives you when you run that bin slash super scaffold for the OAuth provider. After that, we can then run the final command, which is gonna be our super scaffold. We pass in a OAuth provider type. So instead of CRUD or CRUD field, this is now OAuth provider. We tell it the uh, first argument is the OmniAuth Google OAuth 2, which is the name of the gem. We then have Google uh, underscore OAuth2, which is the name of the uh, authorization provider or authentication provider, I think. We then have the OAuth Google account, uh, which is, I for the life of me, don't remember what this one is, but if we scroll up, we can hopefully see that. That is our provider name. So we're calling it the uh, OAuth Google account. Then we pass in the client and the client secret. We run that, that should now hopefully have all of the data it needs. It says, all right, by uh, default, this will use the dollar symbol, but you do you want to use a extra icon. So for this, we'll go ahead, we'll hit enter. This will try to open up the uh, light supreme right here, but it's missing the two colons in front of the HTTP. So I'll go ahead, I'll do HTTP. This will take us to light.pinsupreme.com slash icon fonts, themify or whatever. And then in here, we can search for, or just scroll down to, the Google icon. So if we come down here, there's the bird from the bird app when it was still the bird app. Uh, we have ti-google. So we can just go ahead and we can put that in here. We can say ti-google as our icon. Now let's go ahead and let's do a bin slash dev. We'll just go ahead and start our server. Of course, as you can see, this would be a lot easier if I didn't spend all this time explaining it. Uh, but if you just run these like four commands and you know what to do, uh, we'll run the pending migrations. If you just run these four commands and you know what to do, you can very quickly add in a button here. So we can click sign in with Google. We can see what this uh, app's request is invalid. And the way we can fix this is if we click on the error details, we can see uh, you can't sign in because it doesn't comply with Google's OAuth 2. If you're the app developer, register the redirect URI. It gives you the request details, which include the redirect URI, which is actually this HTTP localhost slash user slash OAuth blah, 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 slash callback. So we click done. After we copy that, we can then come over to our credentials. We can edit our key here. And instead of having this authorized uh, redirect URI, we can add in, uh, let's just add in a second one, where we add in localhost slash user slash uh, auth slash Google OAuth 2 slash callback. We click save on this. It does say it'll take up to five minutes, but let's go ahead and let's go back to our app, refresh, click sign in with Google. And now you can see this is working. It allows us to go back to our bullet train app because we added that specific callback here. Uh, and again, anytime in the future, if you want to edit this, you just click on the little edit button and Google lets you do that. The only thing is you can't get your client secret back. So if you ever you know, totally mess up, then you have to regenerate a key. Well, let's go over here to uh, our account. We'll click on login and we can see, sorry, there's already a user registered with this email address, but this Google account isn't configured for login with that account. Please sign in using your password, then add this account. So if I come in here and I log into my account like I normally would, we can then come over to our account, account details, uh, and we can connect our Google account in here. So this is really good because it allows users to even connect an account if they've already logged in before. So now I'll connect to Google account. I'll click on my Google account that matches that email. We can see we've successfully connected it. So now I'll go ahead and I'll click log out. And now I'll click sign in with Google, click on my account and this should log me into the same account. So that's one thing that, that's fantastic. For the second one, let's go ahead and let's uh, say we don't have an account. Now we wanna sign up with Google. I'll just choose the second email. I have no idea if this is gonna work. Uh, it seems like it has. I'll just go ahead and do the same thing. 
and I'll say my team is going to be Dean. And again, I'll click login. And now you can see that I have this account as well, just created with that same login workflow. So it really, uh, it depends on how you want to set this up. But personally, I really love that you can so easily see that you already have an account, you log into it, and then you can go ahead and add it right away. There's no friction there. So this, uh, I absolutely love how this is set up. It's a little bit confusing. I wish the README had a bit more information about how you get those like four pieces of options or those four options that you need like right here in my notes the generating of the three models plus the scaffold does require a little bit of uh, fishing to figure that out but as soon as you figure that out this is like an absolute cakewalk to set up so yeah hopefully you found this interesting and helpful uh, and hopefully i will see you in the future tutorial